and welcome to my presentation on an analysis of multidisciplinary scholarship and popular sources surrounding the intersection of role-playing games, race, and identity. A copy of these presentation slides is posted on my website if anyone is interested in following along that way or looking back at this information later. The study was inspired by a diversity statement that Wizards of the Coast released in June 2020 when announcing a new Dungeons & Dragons book, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Reading that statement inspired me to study the history of race in role-playing games and examine how fantasy games in particular present the topic of race to their players. I found that some of the most popular tabletop and digital RPGs limit the potential for diversity among player characters link the characters' abilities with their racial backgrounds, and provide platforms for real-life racism. In this presentation, we'll review key sources that I analyze more deeply in a critical literature review and analysis that will be published in the International Journal of Roleplay. The full paper engages with power dynamics in games and provides a framework for positioning future scholarship. Though progress toward correcting racial misrepresentation and underrepresentation in RPGs is slow, meaningful changes are happening and they can pave the way for more significant changes in new RPGs. One of the main themes that I examine in this review is representation. Sociologists are also concerned with this topic. Dietrich examined 65 online multiplayer RPGs released during the 10 years between 2000 and 2010 and found that only four, which is about 6%, enabled players to create a black character. The lack of representation in digital RPGs, including highly popular games like World of Warcraft, which only recently updated to allow for a wider range of persons of color represented in their avatars, is particularly concerning because the game designers were placing clear limits on the racial makeup of the in-game world. Players have a little more freedom to create diverse characters in tabletop games since they're not limited by presets built into the game. However, design choices and rule books for tabletop games also influence the players' perceptions of the game world's makeup. Long examined artwork in the Dungeons & Dragons Player's Handbook and illustrated that D&D consistently underrepresents racial minorities when compared with U.S. Census data close to that handbook's release year. Representation has improved in more recent editions, though the fifth edition player's handbook still underrepresents Asians and Native Americans. This results in an image of the in-game world that skewed white, even though there are no rules forcing players to create white characters. Building on the topic of under and misrepresentation of minorities in RPGs, other scholars examine the influence that a game's character race options have on players. Fantasy games create a new world, but that world is closely tied with our own, and fantasy races in-game are influenced by real-world race and racism. For example, Trammell argues that D&D's character creation mechanic, quote, reproduces an essentialist understanding of race found in eugenics, unquote. While acknowledging the physical distinctions between races in D&D have their roots in fantasy literature and war game mechanics, Trammell maintains the racism in RPG's history cannot be decoupled from race as a fantasy concept. Simply adding more diverse character options isn't enough of a course correction for this issue. One of the things Higgins highlights in his article is games which prevent blackness as a, quote, exterior painting of the body equivalent to an aesthetic choice, unquote, are one of the main issues in these RPGs. He argues that meaningful nuanced representation should include a default black race and people of color with rich cultures. The character race options that games offer players affect the entire gameplay experience. For his study of Final Fantasy offers one example of this by examining how the game mechanics guide the value players put on diversity versus homogenization. While earlier versions of the game encourage diversity in a player's party of characters, Final Fantasy X and XI presented differences as an obstacle and thus discouraged players from creating culturally diverse groups. On the other hand, Nielsen's research explores the positive potential of role-playing games. 
RPGs allow players to take on and customize a role, and the basic game mechanics can allow the possibility of diverse character creation and meaningful discussions of race and racism. RPGs that do provide opportunities for players to create diverse avatars allow for the possibility of interacting with a wide variety of identities. One of the key reasons why representation in games matters is that it affects the lives of real people. Nakamura examines one such situation in World of Warcraft where anti-Asian slurs were used to demean farmers who play for profit rather than leisure. Even without in-game options to build avatars with Asian features available at the time, certain players invented ways of racializing and profiling players they would target for discrimination and harassment. Bringing real-world racism into game worlds isn't an inevitable outcome, though. Bowman and Schreier's interviews with RPG players point out that, at their best, RPGs let players try on new identities and engage in positive social experiences. The ability for players to create their own chosen identity within a virtual world and then interact with others' identities opens the possibility for personal self-exploration. It can also prompt a deeper thought and discussion about the implications that in-game interactions between diverse people may have for real-world interactions. Scholars analyzing tabletop and digital RPGs, presentations of race, reveal that RPGs profoundly engage with identity. This engagement has meaningful implications for how players conceptualize race and respond to racism. When diversity is limited, the game may create virtual worlds where people of color are marginalized or don't even exist. However, fantasy RPGs also allow for a vast array of character options and, when they enable diverse representation, they help foster discourse about real-world diversity. Given these two extremes in the positive and negative potential of RPGs, representation in these games contributes significantly to real-world discourse surrounding race and racism. RPGs are also one of the most popular game genres. What happens within these game worlds affects a large number of players, often in profound ways. It is vital that scholars, game designers, and players work together to encourage nuanced diversity in games and advocate for more diverse game designers. This is already starting to happen, as evidenced by the Native American-designed Coyote and Crow tabletop RPG. Though the history of RPGs and race is problematic, changes such as Dungeons & Dragons pop publication of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and the newly announced 1D&D that's letting players test out new rules for customizing characters, represent efforts toward removing racism in game design. The positive potential of fantasy RPGs can only be fully realized when we come together and work toward meaningful, accurate, and diverse representation in these games. Thank you so much for watching my presentation.